Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the Music Workshop. Right now, we're going to go live with a Chicago legend, DJ Tyree Cooper. Yeah. Let's get jazzy. Don't stop till I say win. 
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, are we on? Are we on? Okay, are we on? I couldn't tell you. Here we go. We're on, buddy? Yes, we're on. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what got to turn his phone down and everything. Yeah, right. We, we just got bombed okay. by KLX. Can I, can I you get know how it is. My, my, my cord. Your cord. He's, trying, he's trying to be in the scenery over yeah, here, man. Yeah, I'm trying to. Damn trying it, boy. To, to turn off the bass. Oh, see, there we go. <laughs> da -da, don't you know? Turn off the bass. Da -da, da -da, don't you know? Oh, Felicia. How <laughs> are you? Just going to get out some obscene shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are live with Chicago's very own Tyree Cooper. Tyree, thank you very much for coming down, thank you. down to thank the you. music thank workshop you. Thank you. and thank doing you. what you do best to um, make it happen. Doing what I do okay. to make it do what it does so it does what it's supposed to do. I hear you. We, we, You know, guys, we're sorry. We started a little late, but then again, traffic got the best of us. We're here now, and yeah, yeah. it's over. We're, we're, yeah. We can relax. Yeah, definitely can relax. Um, I feel more at ease than before because I believe it was more... My organization, a bad organization, or their, a lack thereof organization, but still, it still works out. So um, I appreciate being here. It's an honor to be here with my man Louie and the Global Mix DJs uh, that's putting it down for Chicago. I know I sound like a, uh, an ad on TV, but um, that's just how it sounds, people. Now, Tyree, let's go back to you here. Um, for those who don't know, how long have you been in the actual DJ business? Okay, I've been a DJ for 33 years now. Okay. Um, I've been in the music business for 30 years as of 2016. My first record came out in 1986, so I've been in it here, I've been in the business for like really 30 years to, to the date almost. Okay. I, if any, if any of you guys know, it's just a bunch of Tyree Cooper records. A bunch of stuff that he's put out. I, I, I was telling him I got like a crate over there. I'm not going to have him sign because I'd run out of ink. But <laughs> bottom line is, you know, it's Tyree That's Cooper, funny. everybody. It's Tyree Cooper. Word, word. Um, you were into the hip-hop scene. Hip house. Hip house, right? yeah. Hip house. And that was you, Fast Steady, a lot of Cool Rock. Yeah, and Fast Steady, Cool Rock, JMD, Sundance, the queen of hip house. Fast Steady, the king of hip house. JMD, uh known as the club Mr. Club Banger uh, now uh, Sundance he's on the radio so 106 and so forth uh, my man Doug Lazy KYZ my homeboy um, uh, Baby Bam from the Jungle Brothers uh, yeah there's a whole group of us man that was that was doing some hip hop things putting it down even Sway my man Sway in the morning was down with some hip house. now this is interesting because we all know who influenced us on the radio but who influenced Tyree into the game? Uh, well, okay. <clears throat> uh, that's a wow. That's a cool story. Uh, I had music in high school, but I hated music. So when I heard when uh, when my when my best friend Hugo, he go by his name Hugo H, but when Hugo H told me to come to a party, he said a real party. I thought I was going to a real party. And he took me down to see Farley, Funk, and Keith at the time. And from that, that was it. But I had heard the mixes on the radio at the same time, but I just didn't know what they were. I had no idea what a DJ mix consisted of. I, I, I know what a DJ was for the simple fact I would DJ my school parties. But as far as a profession or putting one record with the next record, I was clueless. So my influence is probably uh, Hugo H., Farley Jackmaster Funk, or Farley Funk and Keith at the time, and uh, Kenny Jason, who I thought was a black guy, uh, which was funny. And I told Kenny that story. He laughed for about four days. He may <laughs> still be laughing. You never know. But, uh, yeah, these are my, my biggest influences as far as DJing goes, as far as the DJ thing goes. Leonard Roy as well. Uh, he was a big part of it. You know, the guys like Brian Fraser and stuff like that. Not just a name drop, but these are the guys that really influenced me to do what I do and to do it well. To be blunt, so I tried to 
instill a little bit of all of them in me when I go out and DJ. Okay. And um, as far did you have any 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 music out in DJ International? Yeah, that was the first label uh, I started out with. Um, I, I I started. How can I say? I, I started out messing with them in late '85, early '86. Uh, off and on, just lying, just purely lying about what I was doing. Not necessarily lying about what I was doing, but the veracity of what I was doing. So, if 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 I had two parties a weekend, by the time I got to DJ the National, I'm the hottest DJ on the on the streets. So I have four parties. Generally, I only had two, maybe two on a Friday, maybe two on a Saturday, or one Friday, one Saturday, or you know, it depends on which way it's going but I was popular on the on the southwest or south side um but I was just I just made myself even bigger when I got to them so they wouldn't think I was small potatoes giving them a demo so I had to big my own self up but my first record came out in 1986 the Rocky Jones the owner of the label heard the track like five times and the track I kid you not the track was like 15 minutes long I fit a night the original was like half of a 30 30 minute Max L tape or 30 minute Tone Master. Damn. Yeah, we just we just we just went for the gusto. And when I went in the studio to do it, I went by myself. But I forgot the programs and whatnot, so I had to basically patch that record together because I couldn't remember which program was which and how we did what and how it. So we didn't have we didn't use a sequence. So we used Marshall Jefferson's drum machine, his 808. Uh, so we didn't have a sequence, so I had to try to patch that or piece it together, you know, hi hat for hi hat. So um, that happened around '86, and Rocky loved it. He heard it five times, so and he said it needed strings out of all that. <laughs> so he asked me to go in the studio and record it, and shit, the rest of his rest is history. Wow, how long have you been now in Europe? Cause I know that's you residing at now, right? Yeah, I'm residing in Europe. I, I live. I've been in Europe for the last uh, 16 years. Um, I, went, I moved in 2000. I moved out of Chicago in '99. Just had enough of just you know just politics in Chicago and stuff like that. I uh, moved to Las Vegas for about seven months, and when I, I you know, Vegas is cool and everything, but um, I felt I felt that I would have had to get a normal nine to five job, which is not. Nothing against anyone who works a nine to five job. It's just I want them lazy bones. I could have been uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. I could have been the super lazy bone, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and I didn't want to work a job. So I just said, screw that. I'll go to Europe. Um, I'll, I'll I'll try to make it there. And sixteen years later, man, you know, I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Um, Putting together the gym DJ thing, man. I, I, we had no idea that we would somewhat reach a certain height and actually blow up in 114 countries oh. and showcase people that we heard when we were kids mm. on the radio. Okay. You know, so it's it's a pleasure for me to be sitting here next to you. Okay. Opening my doors. Oh yes, and, and, yes. And, and somewhat repaying the favor right back. I, well, I appreciate it, man. And uh, I it. it's awesome how we work hand in hand. Your name builds up my brand. Mm -hmm. My brand helps put you up, up as well, even though, you know, you're Tyree and your name's out there. Yeah, but that's part of giving back, though, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, that's so, necessarily monetary, though. Th it is, isn't. you're right, and it's one hand scratching the other. Exactly. You know, and um, again, thank you for being a part of that and actually, um, you know, being able to want to wanna work and get oh, it done. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. That's that's part yeah. of it. Look, you can't be in this business. Look, I'm... I'm uh, my, one of my best friends is Africa Islam. I don't know if anybody knows who he is. The DJ for Ice T, uh, the son of Bambada. Uh, you know, none gets no hotter. That that's his whole I Africa Islam whole little slogan and stuff. Yeah. But he's one of my best friends on the planet. And um, uh, when he and I uh, talk sometimes, man, it's just uh, we 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 talk about we're the we're fans of. I'm a fan of house music. I'm not just a producer. I'm I'm. I was a kid at the parties dancing. When I got into it, I had my own dance club. Um, I got into the promotion side, how to promote a party, because when I started DJing, uh, this one guy, his name was Marvin Terry, said, 
man. I don't care what DJ you are, how good you think you are. Nobody's going to know you if nobody's in the party. I went, hey, that's right. So I learned how to promote parties. I learned how to do the other little things that maybe some DJs don't do or won't do or don't know anything about. So I, I you know, I, I got into the business and then when I when I started recording records, I um you know, I, I learned I got into learning how to sell the records also. So I worked for DJ International. I just wasn't an artist. I, I worked for Quantum Distributors, which was the distribution company that was in the same building as DJ International. So I worked there and learned how to sell the records. So I built up a rapport with some record stores and things of that nature and learned my business, or learned my craft. And for the last 20 years, I've learned publishing in the music business. So uh, I, I, think I've, I think I've taken, I've been in this music business long enough to understand what it is now and and to be able to give back to someone like yourself and you know other other um, other vehicles that 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 are provided for us for as far as house yeah music. thank you and when he says give to me it's really to you guys because right. we're, we're giving you a show so you guys can view and that's right. awesome that he's actually giving back so you guys can check right. out his set and see what Tyree's about you know um, no he has a produce a hip house record. But he's still out there. He's still he's in Europe making money. It's he's still out relevant. there. He's that's out right. there making people dance and making it happen. And that's that's awesome, you know. Um, despite of the new hairdo, but I mean, oh well, you know the hairdo is you know that's that's just lack of um, you know that's this is this is my natural hair. It's not ultra perm. This is, this is only juices and berries. <laughs> if any one of you know the coming to America references and stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, I've been a class clown all through high school. Uh, I've um, enjoyed music, man. I mean, again, giving back is 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 such a small thing, man. I mean, it's it's what every elder should do to a youngin. So now that you're an elder, you have to give back to somewhat, say form and fa uh, say form and fashion, as did the elders before me, your Frankie Farley's. Jesse Saunders, you know, the different ones, Marshall, Mickey Oliver, Kenny Jason. You know, if you sat down, I sat down and talked to each and every one of them. They only, they always give me their own personal views on certain things or whatever questions I had, but at least they found the time to talk to, a, at that time, virtually nobody. Maybe Farley knew who I was because I was in his neighborhood uh, around the corner from his mom's house disturbing all the peace. Mike Dunn and myself and Hugo, so we were... Um, yeah, just giving back, man. That's what it what it's about. You don't have to give anybody money or give them a gig. And it just, it just if a young DJ talks to you, talk back, you know. And there's no such thing as a stupid question or a dumb question. Just ask the question, and you will get an answer. It may not be the one that you like all the time, but you will get an answer. Definitely, and you know, like like you said, when you have an uh, individual like that that takes the time out to answer a question. Mm -hmm you feel fulfilled like wow yeah, you know, exactly he actually you know like one time i remember i did a set and tim Schomer he goes hey huh. great hey great set money and i'm like coming from tim mm -hmm. it it means a lot because yeah. because yeah. being that kid running to the radio on a saturday night or a friday night with a tdk cassette mm -hmm. to record these guys play <laughs> tell me and about now it. i get to somehow they get to hear me play and i get a positive compliment that I'm honestly that erupted my head like, shh, like oh yeah. You oh, know? Tell me That's about awesome. it, man. The first party I one of the first few parties in my early early in my career, one of the first parties I did was with um a big oh it was Ron Hardy. I mean, this was when Ron was almost at his peak as far as uh underground goes. And and this is when I was coming up, I mean people started to know me and I I I I don't know. I was so impressed that I had to play before him. I wasn't the opening DJ, but I I got a chance to play before him. And I was so impressed when he said, oh, hey, that's a nice record. <laughs> you know, I'm going, this is a record you've heard a billion times. But to say that I, when I play it, it's a nice record. I'm going, oh, yeah, all right. You know, you try to be nonchalant, real melancholy about it. But I went out in the car. <laughs> my, I told my cousin, my two cousins, uh, uh, Sean and Pepper, I said, man, you know Ron Hardy. He said, what was Ron Hardy asking you? He said he liked my record. 
straight up. Yeah. Ah! You know, I went crazy <laughs> and stuff. You know, you screaming in the car and everything. <laughs> or when I um, when I when I when I would see like Farley, and I, I look at him and say, "What's up? What's up, big bro?" Yeah, I see you, man. You doing your little thing. You know, I see you doing the thing. You know, in my neighborhood, my mom's neighborhood. Hey, what's that little record you playing? How you know I'm playing this record? You know what I mean? It was it's such a compliment, man. So that's what I mean by giving back. You never, you never know. You never. We never too big for this, man. I mean, this is this is a small part of of life, and growing up is it's a big part of your life because this is what you choose to do. But it's so small in the scheme of things, man. I mean. Now let me ask you something, and be honest, be truthful. Okay, I do my best. Okay, how were them pioneers? The pioneer turntable. <laughs> I'm not a spokesperson. No, no, for no. Them, okay, I, I be but, truthful. I but be truthful. we had that conversation. Yeah, I know. Because... I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be very truthful on camera. They suck. No, uh, <laughs> no. They're real cool. I, I really like them. Um, the torque is cool. It's it's if the feel feels weird, uh, but it's a nice turntable. But I also have a butt. Maybe I'm prejudiced. I just love my Technique twelve hundreds. Maybe that's it. But if I played on them every day, and I got used to them, I probably wouldn't. You know, what I mean, wouldn't go to twelves. But I, I have to get used to the. The torque, is 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 what you want it to be. It's strong or hard, which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I just got to get used to playing on it. I would have to get used to playing on it. So mm -hmm. it's a great turntable, man. If if, if mm -hmm. I, I would advise anyone, if you're mm -hmm. looking at a pair of turntables and you don't mm -hmm. necessarily be the. Mm -hmm. uh, a typical, you know, I gotta have a pair of twelves. The pioneers would probably be the closest thing that I've touched so far to twelves. I mean, Gemini's were okay back in the day, but this is probably the best turntables next to twelves to me. What other turntablists and other DJs feel uh, is something different, but they do. They are nice. They do feel smooth, and the um, and the stopping going, the, the stop and start is really really cool. So yeah, it's supposed to be the closest thing to a CDJ. I would give it that. I, I would definitely give it that. And somebody's trying to get in into because uh, I hear uh, uh, the secret the secret telephone. That's ringing. the that's the bad phone, man. Uh, okay, the bad phone. They don't let ringing. me interview Tyree, man. And, you know, you, guys well, you know how it is else. coming in, man. They coming in and say, they say want, what? Say they what? Want Tyree, Juan. They want Tyree's autograph. No. Say what? You Juan. Have... Boy. Say nah, nah. I <laughs> don't know who you talk to. No. So the man talk to Tyree Cooper. Don't ask I don't ask a question that I want to hear. Say so what going, rude boy. Oh my god. Rude yes. boy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> see star. See. Sin. So maybe all about Jamaicans and talking Jamaican now. There you have it. That's Tyree right there, man. <laughs> you know? I forgot the camera was on just that quick. I'm such a clown, man. I'm such a clown. I forgot the camera was on just that quick. I hear you. But no, the whole turntable thing, man, it is what it is. I yeah. got 12s right in front of us. Yes. I mean, with rain. I mean, I, yes. I, I, we've all started off with 12s. We can never let that go. No. But I mean, um, they don't make them anymore, guys. And when they Well, in Europe, them, they still make them. They still make 12s? Are you kidding? 12s and can't... Man, listen. This whole business of vinyl has come back 24, uh, 3... Man, was it last year? La the year before last? They, they, they sold just, a million vinyl records they announced that they're going to come back with 12s and their prices were ridiculous yeah but they just so, give it time man there's look in las vegas you can buy 1200 at best buy i see them online on best buy if they still have them available if they haven't sold out and that's just, i think come on i think that's just the marketing ploy we sold out all of our 12s or really can you order them yeah but it's going to cost you Steve, Curly, if you want to touch it you okay right just go here. to a pawn shop or somewhere uh you, you can find 12 you can find them online yeah, this is Steve, uh, they're, they're not that difficult it's just that um more and more young kids i mean young kids 22 22 21 yo, 22 this is Steve, 23 Curly, and you listen to um, KLXE. yo 24 this is Steve, years old maybe. Curly. they're looking and especially in Europe they they're, they're looking at turntables you know they have vinyl parties now yeah, they do. They are saying that vinyl sounds better, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah. You know, they, they've tried to bring it back. And for the most part, I mean, I, I love vinyl. I'm a vinyl guy. Um, however, not every genre comes in vinyl. So, unfortunately, and oh, also, vinyl has went up. So, it's not like before yeah, where we would man. buy, we'd buy that Super Transfer, remember that, yeah, on a Sunday? Yeah, And we'd take our bus either to the flea market. Yeah, Super we'd Transfer. We'd take our bus to, <laughs> to gramophone, to imports. And we're buying... 
dollar records, yeah. two ninety nine records. Yeah. If you bought an import, it might have hit ten. Okay, yeah. with the tr with the three mil plastic. Yeah. Okay, it all depended, but um, wow, dude, now. And that was your day. And my day, vinyl imports was six ninety nine, five ninety nine. This is an import. And well, they, domestic they, was three ninety nine. They went up. They went up. Yeah, they that's, this was about twenty yeah. years, thirty years ago. But my point was, in Europe, right? Um, vinyl stores are opening up everywhere. Vinyl stores, not MP three shop. Vinyl. Europe is paying top dollars for a lot of our vinyl. Yeah, because they they I, I believe that they're trying to recreate something that they missed. And the Americans are too <laughs> uh stuck in their ways. That's just my opinion. I can't say they are or they aren't, but they just some of them are just too stuck in their ways to understand what the change is. Cause when I tell people I want to play on turntables, when I play in Chicago, they go, What? I'm like, Yeah, turntables. Uh, well, we don't have turntables. I'm going, wow. You couldn't walk in any club in Europe. I don't care. And I've been to Moscow. I've been to Siberia. I've been to China. You cannot go to any club anywhere in the world and not see a pair of 1200s unless you come to Chicago. So you got 1200s in Siberia? Dude. These guys are freezing and they... Dude, <laughs> I did the party in Siberia outside. It was the day. It was the last day of summer. The no. last day, the last day of the summer. It was August tenth, twenty fifth, something like that. It was the last day of summer, man, and and the party was outdoor, inside. I was so close. I was five hundred miles away from China, the the sea in China. The sea, in China. Uh huh. That's how close I was in Siberia. I could have went up a little bit more and crossed over to Alaska, in the Bering Straits. I don't think you want to do that. No, it's too damn cold. They don't party over there. Yeah, they party, but it's too damn cold. Man, there's not a place on this earth that does not have a house, quote unquote, house party. They've had. I've been to Tel Aviv, Israel. I've been to Jerusalem. That I see. They tune in. Man, they tune like in. Place, places that that we will never probably ever step foot on. They tune in, and that's Ukraine. The before the before that erupted, I've been to Ukraine. House music, Russia. House music. Uh, What's the other? Bosnia. Remember Bosnia? Yeah. House music. Serbia. Remember Serbia? Yeah. House music. Yugoslavia. Music? House music. Croatia. House music. Anywhere in the Eastern Bloc is pretty much house. What What are you? What is Tyree working on now? Are you still making tracks? Yeah. Is there something in the works? Oh right yeah, now? I have a I have a um, I have my own record label called Chicago Vinyl Records. It's being distributed by uh, Juno UK. My next release is the Soul Revival number three. It comes out August first on vinyl. Uh, that's CVR zero zero five. After that, I have a, a a hip house record that I'm releasing, a uh, new one um, from a friend of mine. His name is Pure G O D, and he's from Philly. Uh, I'm doing a record with him, waiting for a remix from a. Uh, uh, I'm so I'm so calling Uncle Milty Milty Evans. Milty, he's coming out of a picnic in two weeks. Okay, well he's done yeah. a remix for me. Uh, he has some great music. He's done a remix on a hip house track for me. So uh, I'm releasing my back catalog as well on my label. You know, some of the, I fit a nice turn to basses, hardcore hip house things of this nature. Even my dance mania stuff I'm re-releasing re and everything. So um, yeah, I'm still very very active in, but I'm releasing everything on vinyl. So I'm very active in the movement for one. And uh, releasing more material. That's awesome. Where um, are you on SoundCloud and stuff like that? Yeah, DJ Tyree Cooper, SoundCloud. DJ Tyree Cooper, SoundCloud. Uh, Tyree Cooper, MixCloud. Um, I don't. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't put anything up. Everyone just steals from me. I just steal it back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can find me. Just type in Tyree Cooper, as as uh, my doctor said. Hey. Can I Google your name? I said, yeah, yeah, you can Google my name. So you can Google Tyree Cooper and, you know, whatever comes up, images or video or whatever. I'm, I'm, I try to stay as relevant as possible and not be boring. So, you know, the choice is there. Um, okay, any, any, anything big happening that you may want to let them know? I know uh, you're going back to Europe, but I mean... Anything big? 
like anything that you're gonna want to put out there and promote and let them know about. That. Yeah, just my new my new release on on uh, Chicago Vinyl Records is called Da D A Soul S O U L Revival uh, Number Three on Chicago Vinyl Records. I have that coming out and and just a plethora of other re- releases that I that I have um, 